Hey everybody, today we're talking about experiments and observational studies. These are the two basic sorts of research study that we're interested in in statistics. Here's the difference between them. In an experiment, different treatments are applied to different parts of the sample, and then the variations are noted. The whole point here is that we would like to determine cause and effect. If we have different outcomes between the groups, we'd hope to attribute that to the different treatments. In contrast to experiments are observational studies, in which researchers just measure characteristics of the population of interest without attempting to influence the responses in any way. The most common sort of observational study is just a sample survey. Let's do a few examples. In each of these cases, we want to identify whether we're talking about an experiment or an observational study. Number one, a group of doctors studies the effect of a new cholesterol lowering medication by giving it to their patients that have high blood pressure. This is an experiment. The researchers are um, applying a treatment and then looking at the results. Two, a primatologist observes 10 chimpanzees in their natural habitat taking careful notes about their social behavior. This is an observational study. The primatologist isn't attempting to affect that behavior, just um, taking some observations of it. Three, a pollster contacts 500 men and 500 women, asking each individual which candidate they support in an upcoming election. This is another observational study. Hopefully the pollster isn't attempting to influence the outcomes of the questions that they're asking. Notice that observational studies can be comparative, as in this case, where the pollster is contacting men and women separately. Um, they're just not applying a treatment, so it's definitely not an experiment. Some characteristics of a good experiment. It should be randomized, controlled, and replicable. These are three important vocabulary words that you should get to know. Randomization in an experiment means that the research subjects are randomly assigned to the different treatment groups. In particular, neither the researcher nor the subjects should decide who receives which treatments. Control in an experiment means that the different treatment groups are as identical as possible, except for the specific treatments they receive. This is what's going to allow us to establish cause and effect at the very end. If you don't have control, you're inviting confounding variables alternative explanations for the differences that you do observe. Replica replication means that an experiment can be easily repeated with similar results. An experiment that can't be replicated generally has very low value. Experiments typically involve comparisons between two or more treatment groups. Usually, one of those groups receives no intervention at all, just to give you a baseline for comparison. This is called the control group. Unfortunately, subjects in research studies often respond even to treatments that have no measurable effect. This is known as the placebo effect. For instance, if students in a study believe that they're receiving an experimental lesson plan, um, they may expect to do better on the exam, they may go in with more confidence, and they might actually do better. So experimenters attempt to control for the placebo effect by using a placebo in the control group a treatment that's known to have no real effect. This could be a water pill in a medical study or a lesson unrelated to the material being taught, for instance. For example, maybe the students in the control group are just asked to watch cat videos. Not only should the assignment of subjects to treatment groups be random, it should be double blind whenever possible. That means that neither the subjects nor the people collecting the data should be aware of who is in which treatment group. This is an essential element of good experimental control. Here's why. Subjects who know that they're receiving a placebo treatment will respond differently than those who do not um, know that or who know that they are receiving an experimental one. Researchers, researchers who know which subjects are receiving the real treatment may inadvertently or intentionally observe results differently. They might round measurements differently or they might be liable to note behavioral differences um, more in the treatment group than in the control group. Here's three important sorts of experimental design to keep in mind. Completely randomized design. Subjects are just simply placed into um, different treatment groups at random. Randomized block design. 
in which subjects are first broken into groups based on some characteristic like age or gender, and then assigned to different treatment groups at random. So we might want to run an experiment on people over the age of 50, between 40 and 50, and so on. This potentially allows researchers to determine how the treatment affects different groups differently. Finally, a special sort of randomized block design is the matched pair design, in which subjects are paired by similarity before being randomly assigned to different treatment groups. Results can then be compared one to one.